Hey guys, we've heard that for every lock, there is someone out there trying to break it. And in a world driven by AI, the definition of crime isn't restricted to physical entities alone. Today, cybercrime and cyberterrorism are the greatest challenges man has had to face yet, be it a group of computer enthusiasts learning to hack for fun or government organizations trying to obtain classified information, the internet has become a binary battlefield. Why go heavy on armory when all you need is the click of a button? Welcome to Curious World, where we discover and explore the weird and wonderful world that we live in. In today's video, we're going to reveal some of the craziest computer hacks of all time. Before we get onto the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Also, click on the bell notification icon to never miss an upload. Let's hack into some of the craziest computer hacks of all time, shall we? Number 10. Operation Aurora Hackers always aim big. A series of cyber attacks were launched against the biggest multinational technology company, Google, in mid-2009. These cyber attacks were aimed at large organizations such as Adobe Systems, Juniper Networks, and Yahoo Symantec, to name a few. A group based in Beijing, China, named the Elder Group, claimed responsibility for these advanced, persistent threats on the tech giant. They did aim high, didn't they? Google was visibly troubled. They announced to operate a legally uncensored version of the search engine in China or even shut down all their local branches. The local Chinese officials simply brushed the accusations away, blaming Uncle Sam for taking a dig at them. The attack was coined Operation Aurora, Aurora being the name of the file path used on the attacker's machine. The goal of the attack was to gain access and to modify source code repositories of the security and defense contractor companies. So how safe is all the information that we give away without a single thought? while well, it only takes a hacker to mock the security in place. Number 9. Teen Hacks NASA and US Defense Department The year was 1999. A 15-year-old Florida resident hacked into the Department of Defense and NASA computers. Can you believe that? The very organization that strives to keep the nation secure was in itself not. Jonathan James, who went by his alias Comrade, became an internet sensation for his hacking skills at a very young age. While most would be delighted to finish high school, this young lad had a totally different agenda. He was the first juvenile hacker sentenced to prison, so not so lucky there. What made James popular was the fact that he hacked into the computers that were used by the Defense Threat Reduction Agency DTRA, a division of the US Department of Defense that handled monitoring threats from nuclear, biological, chemical, conventional, and special weapons. James later revealed how he did it. He installed a backdoor into a computer server in Dallas, Virginia, and was able to grab more than 3,300 email messages from DTRA employees with 19 usernames and passwords. James revealed to Frontline, I certainly learned that there's a serious lack of computer security. If there's a will, there's a way. James's story sadly came to an abrupt end in 2008, when he committed suicide after being accused of conspiring with other hackers to steal large amounts of personal and credit card information from a department store chain, TJX. An unfortunate end to a great mind. Here's a fun fact. Talking of young hackers, what do you think is the youngest age of a hacker? Any guesses? You got three seconds to think about it. Three, two, one. You wouldn't guess in your wildest dreams. The answer is five years old. California-based kindergartner Christopher Von Hassel exposed some major security lapses in Microsoft Live's Xbox system. He continues to remain the world's youngest hacker. Number 8. Phone lines block to win Porsche One could go to any end to win a lottery or a lucky draw. This next case of hacking revolves around how one genius tried to turn luck into his favor. In 1990, Kevin Poulsen became famous for blocking the telephone company's computers with the sole motive of becoming the winner of radio station contests. He made sure that his win was guaranteed. But how, I hear you ask? He tweaked the system algorithm such that he would be the particular numbered caller selected to win 20 grand in cash and a Porsche 944 S2 Cabriolet. So was luck really in his favor? Sadly not. Things began to heat up when the FBI began to pursue him. He sorted to go underground and become a fugitive. Being featured on NBC's Unsolved Mysteries only added to his fame, and he was finally caught by the authorities after 18 months of being on the run in April 1991. He pleaded guilty to the judge for computer fraud and served five years in prison. His time inside did him some good. Upon his release, he went on to become a journalist. And not just any journalist. He was the founding editor of Wired's Threat Level blog which won the 2008 Knight Batten Award for Innovation in Journalism. From being a prisoner to a full-time journalist, now that's some transformation. 
If you thought these hacks were exciting and fun, wait for the number one place on our list. It's the craziest hack you've ever heard. Number seven, hacker targets Scientology. They say Scientology is used to increase spiritual freedom and intelligence. Looks like someone used it against them. A 19-year-old from New Jersey, Dimitri Guzner, pled guilty of pushing Scientology's website offline during January 2008. Guzner belonged to a hacking group named Anonymous. He managed to employ the distributed denial of service (DDoS) attack that ended up flooding the site with 220 megabytes per second of unwanted internet traffic. Take it from us, that's a lot to process. A proud Anonymous posted several videos on YouTube claiming responsibility for the attack. In one of them, a creepy computerized voice mentions that they shall continue to expel Scientology from the internet and systematically dismantle the church. So how did this turn out in the end? Well, he faced 10 years in prison for computer hacking charges and was sentenced on August the 24th, 2008 in the US District of New Jersey. What could have otherwise been a bright future left him just being another anonymous. If you're enjoying our top 10 craziest hacks of all time video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And click on that bell icon to never miss an upload from Curious World. Number six, the Melissa virus. While cyber theft and cyber terrorism is haunting people around the globe, cyber sex, on the other hand, is playing catch up. In March 1999, programmer David Lee Smith hacked an American online AOL account and used it to post a file on an internet news group named alt.sex. This posting promised loads of free passwords to fee-based websites with raunchy adult content. Needless to say, this bait was easily taken. With just one click, a virus was unleashed onto several ignorant users' machines. What came to be known as the Melissa virus, named after a stripper in Florida, was capable of hacking into Microsoft Word and progressed into the Microsoft Outlook email system and sent random messages to the first 50 addresses in their mailing lists. Those sent messages tempted recipients to open a virus-laden attachment by giving names such as sexy.jpg or naked wife or deceitfully asserting, here is the document you requested, don't show anyone else, smiley face. Have you received any of these lately? Beware, for all you know, it's just a virus. The virus didn't have anything to do with security breaches. It did, however, crowd the net and many companies had to temporarily suspend their operations, including Microsoft. Smith pleaded guilty in December 1999 and did 20 months in prison with a fine of $5,000. The Melissa virus spread like wildfire, revealing the dark side of the internet and increased awareness of unsolicited emails and the spread of online viruses. Number five, Stuxnet. This is one of the best known cyber attacks, the worm annihilated a fifth of Iran's centrifuges in 2009. This created a hindrance to the country's atomic plants. This virus, according to Trend Micro, consisted of three parts. The worm, worm Stuxnet, an execution, an LNK file, LNK Stuxnet, which allowed the worm to auto-execute, and lastly, a rootkit, RTK Stuxnet, which helped camouflage the worm. For four years, it was assumed that the virus was introduced into the Natanz uranium enrichment facility. The main target of the attack was the 1,000 centrifuges that were damaged through an infected USB stick. Ralph Langner, one of the people who decoded the worm, mentioned in an interview with the New York Times, Stuxnet was a marksman's job. Unless you were running a uranium enrichment facility, it lay dormant, with the root kit hiding in its presence. There is no way for the Stuxnet typhoid Marys to know they were being used by the attackers. So why did the Stuxnet exist? The virus existed due to a botched software update which led to the worm escaping into the wild. This helped security experts who were later able to analyze the virus. So much for worms and viruses, right? Here's us dropping another fun fact. Who do you think is the first ever hacker? Mr. Captain Crunch, John Draper, is touted to be the world's first hacker. And he did it with a toy whistle that came with the serials Cap and Crunch. He managed to alter specific analog frequencies to place free, long-distance, and international calls. This technique was known as freaking. The first internet hacker was Robert Morris in 1989, who is credited with the world's first denial-of-service attack caused by a worm Morris developed at Cornell University. Number 4. The PlayStation Network The PlayStation has not always been associated with just play. Sony announced that the PlayStation Network, PSN, was hacked and exposed the details of their users in 2011. Although Sony is pretty tight-lipped when it comes to matters of security, there have been a few speculations going around. When the PlayStation 3 firmware called Rebug was released, it could turn any PS3 into a developer unit and activate loads of features that are not normally accessed. The Rebug firmware gives the console access to Sony's internally developed network, which allows hackers to access personal data, including passwords. 
Hopefully, Sony has learned from its previous mistakes and made amends. Now we have reached our top three craziest hacks. Number one is going to blow your mind, so make sure that you stay tuned. Number three, US Office of Personnel Management hack. In 2013, the United States Office of Personnel Management, OPM, dealing with the government's civilian workforce, discovered that some of the personnel files were hacked. These files included private information on background checks, government security clearances, and millions of fingerprints. The attacker group, dubbed X1, wasn't able to access the personal records but managed to access manuals and IT system architecture information. In 2014, an attacker group called X2BY stole user credentials to gain access to the OPM network. The attackers exfiltrated the background data from OPM systems and only on April 15, 2015, did security personnel notice unusual activity within the network. Finally, in August 2017, the FBI arrested Yu Pingang, a Chinese national, when he arrived in the US to attend a conference. Is this part of another government conspiracy? We will never know. Number 2. The Home Depot Attack this was the largest retail credit card breach that has ever existed. The hackers gained access to card data belonging to 40 million customers. So how did the hackers do it? They used a vendor's username and password to infiltrate the system and deployed custom-made malware to access the information on the card. Home Depot did not take responsibility in agreeing to the settlement. The standard practice would have been to hire a chief information security officer and upgrade its security procedures and training. The retailer went on to record a $198 million pre-tax expenses infringement. They did, however, manage to resolve the matters directly with the customers, card issuers, and the banks that were harmed during the attack rather than in the courtroom. At number one, we have 160 million records of personal information that were stolen. And do you know what's even crazier? It went undiscovered for four whole years. And we're talking about the great LinkedIn hack scam. LinkedIn's Chief Information Security Officer, Corey Scott, mentioned, We take the safety and security of our members' accounts seriously. For several years, we have hashed and salted every password in our database, and we have offered protection tools such as email challenges and dual-factor authentication. Despite this, the hack was successful. Long-term LinkedIn members were asked to change passwords immediately. It was also advised that users enable LinkedIn's two-step verification to add an extra layer of protection to their accounts. So you see, though you might have multiple layers of security in place, sometimes hackers can just find their way in. In the cyber world, it is a mere assumption that all information is secure. They say that there are only two kinds of companies, the ones that are already hacked and the ones that will be. Who knows? Someone might be working on hacking your system as you're watching this video of the top 10 craziest computer hacks of all time. Crazy, right? And we hope you found our list freaking good, pun intended. Which is the craziest hack you've ever heard of? Let us know in the comment section below. Please do like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to hit the bell notification icon to never miss an upload from us. We will see you soon. And until then, while you're on the web, beware and don't overshare.